and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Atome. Last time we left off, we kind of uh, introduced all of the guys and started all of that. So let's continue. And sorry if you hear anything in the background as people are doing stuff. Uh, these incubi intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. Sorry, we just got mind. here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt very sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, then they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy all while I stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just sitting back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one I like better than me, so I ought to spend more time with myself. But there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never met him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there, and I was armed with only a scrap of paper with the address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed up against the wall and eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking that I could change things with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had become a part of a crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them, though would I? I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over. They would practically think I was part of a harem or something. Oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons list before actually having to make a decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too, much too much about it. About it. You, you have plenty of time to decide. to decide. Besides, Besides you should you do, do what makes you happy, happy as well. It was strange that I remembered to, I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the exact same situation that I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would be e it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already! 
You could stay with me here, if you'd like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads for my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies. But you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This house is kind of big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. Sam looks very, very upset. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me would take care of the house, given they would follow the rules I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Punks? I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful. If you need a bedfellow... Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally! I'm starving! Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs! Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So then... I look back at Damien, who had been silent the whole time. I don't know. What did I choose? Um... Hold on. I look back at Damien, who had been silent the whole time. He was leaning against the far wall, moving his lips almost silently to the empty space besides him. Out of curiosity, I looked the same way, though I found nothing there. It's nothing. Huh? I look back to see Damien looking at me with his normal blank face. I couldn't help but stare back, feeling the red tint of embarrassment spreading across my face. As I stared, Damien gave a small smile and closed his eyes, returning to his thoughts. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together, however, our peace was soon disturbed. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, hey, hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I know exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up. I was expected to act on the drop of a dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know, well, since I don't exactly have you two, two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. I know, I have to do it myself, he won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thanks, Mom. Alright, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. Love you too, Mom. Great. Now, how am I going to do this? Is something wrong? She has to organize a house party for her parents. Uh, oh, right. Mind reading. 
But yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. <laughs> Sam? Back off! We'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile, but I was rather thankful now that I let them stay. No, I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? <sighs> Just a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait, where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right, then. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. <laughs> Shh! As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. It was a long nap. I really like naps. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and was grabbed by my eco I gra- what? It and grabbed my economics book. Knowing that, no matter how hard I tried, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. The words on the pages scrambled in my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Equations, huh? Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today has been a long day and I needed the rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises in a row would kill me. <sighs> With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? I he was gonna say well, fuck boys. Save That's that to the end of my pistol! Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up, and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Take one step, I dare ya. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Huh, Eric? As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into the black as the arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up at the person holding me. D damien I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern. I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. He's so cute. Is everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yeah, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides... We'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Uh, oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure- Oops. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just out of courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. All right. The two boys led me back to the dining room, where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. 
I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. The feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the head on my hand... Head on my hand. Hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then parked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! <laughs> From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked in my direction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for breakfast, it looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring, ushering me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey! Good morning! Guess who's at your door right now? Well, shit. Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! Oh god. My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby, and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining room and the lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go in slow motion. Matthew, no! But before my words reached his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um... The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh... <laughs> Hi? I couldn't believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week had already been bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. For God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? S -S Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? <laughs> Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. 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 Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Uh, they're, they're visitors. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smiling at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led into the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouths. However, the food was would ease their mind for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Nope. Well, you see, um... Gently, James plants a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense! It's such a huge house! A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? 
Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon they met tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time I want to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. I'll stay and help. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it's my whole swarming party. I should help out, too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. All right. We'll head on out, then, so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and walked them through the doors, opening it for, it for them with a thankful smile. They both, they both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It wasn't their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and all we had to do... We had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was who? And I'm going to save it because, uh... When we want to do each different route, we can just go back to this point. I am going to help. Sam was asked for, I think, two or three times, so we're going to do him first, and then we're going to do James. I walked out to the front yard to see Sam not cleaning, but doing slow motions with his arms and arms. He was doing Tai Chi, a form of martial arts I had previously learned aside from Taekwondo. However, he wasn't cleaning, which made me cross my arms and glare at him. Aren't we supposed to be cleaning the front yard? You were taking too long. I already finished cleaning. What? I looked around the front and noticed the windows were polished, the weeds were pulled and tossed out from the sideway, and the lamps were wiped down and the stairs were swept. He really did finish cleaning. We literally disbanded a mere minute ago, though. Wow, you work fast. Sam didn't respond. He kept his eyes closed and continued to do his tai chi. For a guy who wanted to be a badass, I would have imagined him doing hard workouts or karate moves for practice. Tai chi was not what I expected out of him. I stood there wondering what to do. Join him. I remained quiet as I stood beside him and began to move along with his movements. He was going slowly, so it was easy to follow along. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> this isn't supposed to be fun, okay? It's actually supposed to be difficult. Yeah, I know, I know, Quenya. <laughs> Sam opened an eye to look at me without breaking his motions before closing it and continuing. I followed along flawlessly, keeping to his speed. It was very relaxing until I managed to trip over my feet and land on Sam. Oof! Hey! Watch it! S sorry. I had landed on top of Sam, staring eye to eye with him. Sam and I couldn't stop blushing, nor did either of us move from the ground. I could hear my heart pounding against his chest. Sam didn't move a muscle, but just stared up at me in embarrassment. I eventually moved off of him and brushed myself off with a large blush on my face. Sam stared up, sat up, and rubbed his head. Man. Watch where you're going next time. I nodded. He stood up and looked away for a moment. I could see in his eyes that he was very concerned if I was okay, but he refused to ask. I smiled before walking back into the house. I heard him sigh before I walked out of earshot. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party. 
Knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of the mirror in my bedroom, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. What? Sure. It was my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to think, but even so, I didn't have my dad guiding me or help my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Alright. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi and Susie's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. So what? what? Dude, you look hot! You're fucking better. Yeah, you look amazing! Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while, I just never had a chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Y yeah. I was slightly taken aback at how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the stairs with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked down that final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? I'll as ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now it was all up to fate. The other boys smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang, and I gulped. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, I already saved it. Uh, this will be it for this episode, so thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you have something to say, please leave a comment. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe, and I will see you all later.